So if you don't like it, you don't do it. Yeah. It's really, where people mo- moan about, it's the same thing with the, the gay community is this, the gay community is that. And they're the same people who's slagging people off yeah. online, tearing people down, mm-hmm. being exclusive. Mm-hmm. Well, you're part of the problem. Yeah. So if you don't like, and I'm not saying this because I know this is not everybody, but if you don't like that people over-sexualize you, then make sure that what you are putting out into the world is a reflection of who you are and what you feel. Yeah. Like, don't be one of those people who's got pictures of their ass all over the internet and then is fuming that people think you of you as a piece of meat. Yeah. Like that, all we can ever change is what we do. Mm-hmm. And if your friend is one of those people who maybe doesn't watch this podcast for some reason, then you can say to them, hun, look at what you, like, you know, causation, you correl- here, causation, correlation. Yeah. Well, that's good that you said that about getting your friends to watch. And just a reminder, guys, if you're not subscribed or you're not following us, please follow us, subscribe, and give us a rating on, on, uh, on. I think you can rate on Spotify, but you can also rate on Apple, which is the most important one. Yeah, you can. Well, it is for the charts, and it just it just allows us more people to to see us. And if yeah. you want to send us a review or write a review, you can do. Mm-hmm. I'll. Um, do you want to do you want to read one? This is from Ben in Leeds, actually. So Ben in Leeds, where we are, says, I am loving your Happy Healthy Homo podcast and YouTube channel. I'm 32 and I've only accepted that I am a gay man fairly recently within the past couple of years. Like a lot of other gay men, it seems, I have struggled to form long-lasting friendships with other gay men, as a lot of people in the gay community that I've formed connections with just don't seem to have their heads screwed on or have serious issues. I was told about your channel recently through word of mouth. You two are doing a really good job of showing different and sensible ways to be gay and it's so refreshing. I think the chemistry between you two is adorable and something I hope to find one day. Take care and definitely keep up what you're doing with this podcast, Ben. Thank you, Ben. That's very sweet, Ben. That's very you. kind. It's it's nice to be refreshing, isn't it? I Because I think we can sometimes doubt ourselves as well because we're just... We're partners and we're both white men. We can sit here going, yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Yeah. But to know that it lands with you guys. And um, I mean, we don't agree on everything, do we? Not everything. But um... <laughs> <laughs> That sounded really ominous, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, not everything. Not everything. Um, but yeah, the long and the short of it is thank you. So I'm going to segue this in using Ben's review. He said different and sensible. So mm-hmm. are there examples that are healthier rather than only fans? Porn, gay mm-hmm. Instagram. Well, Momo sent a voice note in. Okay. So, Hearts Trapper, I'm a really big fan of the show, obsessed with it, one of my favorite shows. And personally, I feel, you know, when you're going through your understanding of your sexuality, trying to, you know, bring yourself to terms of that, you're obviously doing research, and the media and online, uh, unfortunately, very much hypersexualizes or over sexualizes your understanding of your sexuality in uh, another way or the other but I think like with Heartstopper it really showed you know what being gay is all about um, it showed love I think in a very pure and innocent form and I honestly feel you know that in entirety that's what it really is so I was really happy that you know the story was brought to life to actually educate people that you know that's what being gay is really all about. Definitely, there are healthy examples of what it is to be gay out there. Heartstopper is a really good example of that. Red, white, and royal blue. Red, white, and royal blue, yeah. But uh, do you know what is interesting? We've spoken about this before, haven't we? I remember we watched Red, White, and Royal Blue mm-hmm. together. And we, we watched TV together, obviously. Um, and we watched Fellow Travellers, which we spoke about before. I mean, Fellow Travellers has some quite explicit stuff on. Mm. Whereas Royal Red, White, and Royal Blue doesn't, so I want to use that as an example here because it didn't. It had like some intimate scenes in the fact that yeah. people were kissing and you knew that they were going to be doing sexy time, mm-hmm. but it wasn't explicit. No, it was far less than what you would see on a heterosexual, like sexy mm-hmm. time show. And yet, me and me and Joe both kind of sat there going, "Ooh, is it, what? Am I internally homophobic that I'm uncomfortable with this?" And I think it's just that. It's weird that we've been over stimulated with like full on porn, mm. like full on sex, but seeing something that's done a bit more tastefully, 
I don't, I don't really know how to discreetly. I don't. That makes it sound like it's like a, a, a clandestine thing, and it's not. But something. It's a gay relationship that we've not kind of seen in that kind of light. The same yeah. with Heartstopper and things like. Not so much Heartstopper because it doesn't have that kind of element to it. But you know where you see a gay couple just being intimate, whether they're holding hands, mm-hmm. they're kissing, they they're maybe you know touching each other, but it's not sex. Yeah, and it kind of makes you go, oh, I'm not like I don't know how I feel about that, and I, I think it's because of a lack of exposure to it that's well yeah it. it's it's one or the other isn't it i suppose maybe what you're saying is it's either one extreme where it's full-on sex or or porn or the other extreme where you just don't see it it's secret doesn't it's exist. secret yeah. so seeing that middle ground which is probably normal and it probably is an healthy, okay use of the word normal yeah healthy yeah yeah it's uh it suddenly is jarring so you're like well i'm not used to seeing this implied sexual because it was like raunchy enough that you wouldn't want like a five-year-old to see it but it wasn't so raunchy that a 15-year-old can sit there yeah, and enjoy exa- it do you yeah, know what i mean yeah, exactly so it's um yeah it's it's strange but it goes to show the importance of the that we need to be as a community as a society and not a, i'm not talking about gay people i'm talking about society at large mm. to be exposed to because yeah. people always say oh we don't need it ramming down our throats who cares that they're gay don't like you get all that but People need to know that A, it exists, and B, it's okay to exist, and it doesn't have yeah. to be, you know, getting sucked off in a toilet, yeah. you know, something a public to- something associated seed, with shame, seedy, yeah. shameful. It can just be a nice, happy, consensual relationship, 